Hello, here is just a quick little video. Uh, I'm in the middle of recording some tutorials for a class I'm teaching. And since I had this setup all rigged up, I thought I would just uh, make a short little video and tell you about my latest gig with A. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep the setup. It's very easy to, to uh, rig it up. So uh, maybe I can make more videos if I do it this way. Not as polished, but maybe can have them come out quicker. Anyways, I recently went to the Netherlands with A and I thought I would show you some behind the scenes clips from that. If my calculations are correct, we were there in total 35 hours and we managed to play two gigs, so I'm pretty happy about that. We started the trip by taking the bus to the airport at 5.45, so two sleepy Norwegians on tour in the morning rain. Hello. <laughs> we checked in our music equipment without any problems. Although, since I was so sleepy, I got a big shock when I looked at the weight and it said the 27 kilos or something. And I was like, hey, that's that's not right. Um, and then, of course, the guy just told me that the tray itself weighs like three or four kilos. So I was like, whew. So we got on the plane and dozed off to some ambient music. After landing in Amsterdam, we took the train over to Deventer. Deventer? Deventer? Deventer, which is how Janne told me it's pronounced. Um, she used to live in the Netherlands for 17 years, first as a student and then as a performing artist. So uh, she speaks fluent Dutch, which came in very handy. She could uh, read the magazine on the train and she took care of dealing with the Dutch train ticket app. Although her phone had a big giant meltdown every time she had to scan the ticket, so we barely made it through all the automatic scanning uh, gates. In Deventer, we met up with Harko, who runs the label Eskrek who is uh, responsible for releasing Janne's solo album as well, which has one track with A on it. The gig was in a shutdown factory that, if I understood correctly, used to make heart-shaped candy. We were guided to the room we were gonna play, and I thought it was quite cool and vibey. We also checked out the backstage area, which looked like kind of like an abandoned Christmas party with the tree still up. Then we checked out the rest of the building, which we're currently housing an installation by this artist that I don't dare try to pronounce the name of. It was a very nice installation with some cool sounds and we could check it out in uh, different floors, including the basement, which was very nice. And this was actually one of many exhibitions uh, during a three months art biennale called. Uh, Eisel Biennale, see what's that? Eisel Biennale. The Eisel Biennale. So we rigged up our stuff and had a sound check. Uh, here is Jan describing how she wants her microphones to sound to the technician, who, by the way, did a great job. And then, finally, it was time for coffee. <laughs> Since we wanted to try to sleep some on the plane, we hadn't had any coffee this whole day. So we were very excited to go to the local cafe where they had a fancy barista coffee machine and we ordered two double cappuccinos. And you can believe our disappointment when the super hungover waitress, after some time, came over to our table, set the coffees down and said, I'm no barista, this is the best I can do. <laughs> it's hard to see on the picture because Jan has so much fog on her lens, but half the coffee is outside the cup. And I think this is the most lousy try of cappuccino foam I've ever seen. 
When the second guy came out with our food, he looked at the two cups and he said, this became a mess. Whereby Janne had to correct him and say that they actually came as a mess. Luckily, they tasted good and the food we ordered were excellent. Then it was time for the gig, hang out by the Christmas tree, get introduced, put on the shoes, press record, make sure Janne's wireless sender was on and play. I thought the gig went well and people were very excited. Back to Harko's place, cup of tea, some music and a good conversation before we had to go to bed. You see, the next day we were playing in Harlem, which is not that far from Dayfender. Uh, but the problem was that uh, there was also going to be a Formula One race close by. So everyone told us it's going to be chaos on the trains. You have to go really early. So we took the 8th train in the morning and there was no one there. In our whole train wagon, there was only one lady other than us. And it was so quiet, so Jan uh, took out her uh, laptop and thought maybe he can do a little bit of work. But then we stopped at the next station. <laughs> there was a bunch of people coming home from a hard style event that had been going on the whole night. <laughs> so all of a sudden there was a full hard style party on the train with everything that comes with that. It looks more like uh, going to the festival than going to the festival. It's already happened. Yeah. Yeah. They were very friendly and cute, <laughs> but what a big contrast to the all silent train. Then when we were going off to change to a different train, the woman came and talked to us and said that she was actually going to Norway right now to teach at Tromsø University. Pretty small world. Got to Harlem and to the dance studio called MAPA where we were scheduled to play. We checked out the room, finally got some good coffee and of course we had to tell the story of the last cup of coffee we had. Sure, and they had a huge <laughs> coffee machine, so it looked very like yeah. this is going to happen. Prof, and then they, he came with the coffee, and it was like you know, schotel and a bait, and it was all of us, it was mud brown. Then we rigged up, did a sound check, they adjusted the lights, we rested on the floor. Then we played the gig, had a chat with the audience, rigged down, and went home. 35 hours, two gigs. Tchum!